Okie dokie. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to Obooks Presents. Uh, my name is Ben Crabe and Obooks we publish books for spiritual living and books for mindful living. And today I've got with me one of our authors, uh, Jules Standish. And Jules has written a very um, interesting book with us. Uh, Jules is a colour counsellor, um, which means she's like an expert in personal style, a colour consultant. Uh, she lectures at the London College of Style. Uh, is a public speaker and um, her book before us was How Not to Wear Black and um, uh, a book uh, that's most recently published with us is The Essential Guide to Mindful Dressing which is all about uh, using uh, colour consciously and intelligently to enhance your life, um, to help you do things you want to do, um, help you look your best and to help you uh, be your best. Uh, some other facts about um, Jules, uh, she's worked with um, the Colour Flare system of image consultancy for about 10 years, uh, just over 10 years, um, and uh, she's worked with lots of different people from individuals to TV presenters to housewives, um, charities, organisations, um, uh, and she regularly presents on colour and style including at the boutique brunch fashion event at Goodwood, corporate talks, business executives, like to, uh, to MasterCard and BT, and uh, she um, helps teach and run evening colour events at venues like Champney Spas and High Road House in London. Hi Jules. Hi Ben. <laughs> was that was that accurate description? Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, yeah, it's, uh, it kind of summarises a lot of the things that I have done and uh, I'm still doing. I, I tutor a lot at the moment, uh, mm. teaching a lot, training students and style students in colour and how they can really put colour into their world of fashion. So that's really important. Uh, and I'm also doing some quite important work in sixth form schools, going and teaching kids how to present themselves for interviews and what colours they would choose for different job applications and how they should um, think about the, the actual clothing as a uniform as to getting that job rather than just relying on their CVs, but how they actually present themselves, which... Um, a lot of places aren't doing so that's something else i'm quite passionate about at the moment trying to get color into schools brilliant oh, i wish someone had come into my school and <laughs> talked about that yeah well me too <laughs> yeah um, but you describe yourself as a, as a color counselor so it's not just a color specialist a color counselor which is a really interesting title so i wondered if you could explain what why you chose that title and also it's a very interesting niche and in how you came to be a color counselor um, I, I kind of morphed into that as a title because I realized that what I was doing when I started out wanting to be a stylist, the colors became so important to my work and I saw such incredible transformations in people mm -hmm. that I realized that what I was doing was a therapy because mm -hmm. it was making people feel really good about themselves uh, by looking fabulous, by gaining confidence, which is so at the root of so many issues for so many people of all ages, um, actually it made me realize that it really was a, a healing gift really that I could mm. give people to understand what their best colors were, to go out and smile, to get complimented, to know that the colors that they were choosing were actually having a real impact on their emotions. It was mm. really incredibly powerful. So I thought, yeah, this, this is a niche because there are lots of people doing colors, there are lots of stylists out there, but I felt that by getting to them on a psychological level was just really where it worked for me because it wasn't just about putting a color on and going, you look fantastic in pink, take the shade of pink and, and go forth and multiply. It was so much deeper than that. So it really, to me, made me think, yeah, this is my niche. This is where I'm going to really shine and try and help people. Um, yeah. And so it became a title that resonated with the work that I was doing and the books that I was writing trying to educate people, I guess, at that level. Yeah, no, fantastic. And, um, you know, when you're little, I guess, you know, you have your favourite colour and you're quite aware of colours and kind of connected to colours. But uh, I, don't, I think generally today, other than maybe people who really care about their clothes to an extent, but people don't really understand or engage with colour on anything like the level that you're teaching here. So, I mean... I, I wonder if you could, you know, because colours are affecting us all the time everywhere. And I wondered if you could say something about how how that's true and how, you know, if you're someone who doesn't think of colour, you can start to become conscious of it. 
in your life? I think uh, it's very valid that. And actually, I think as kids, because we are so much more sensitive and aware to our environments, you know, teaching, I, I, I've, done, I've taught teachers about mm. how to wear colours when they're with children in classrooms and how important that is, because I think it does become something that you're immune to because we are surrounded by it day in and day out and subconsciously mm. affected by it. Um, and it's about <clears throat> helping people to understand the importance of what colour's doing rather than just being unconscious about it all the time. Mm. Mindful dressing is about being conscious. So how does it work? Well, everything that we look at, every colour is actually light. Mm. And uh, I receive light through the photoreceptors at the back of the eye. Now, 80% of what we see around us is actually used for our eyesight. But the other 20% goes in and affects our hormonal system because it go directly affects the hypothalamus gland and the pituitary gland. There are hormone glands. So light, and particularly bright colors, releases dopamine in the brain. It gives us a feel-good factor and a happiness. So actually colors really do affect our mood. So the colors that we see, and we all know what happens when we go into winter in this country in particular. And you know, the, the, the sad thing happens to certain people because it goes so dark, there's not enough light. Mm -hmm. And actually that's how we are with colors that we wear, the colors that we see. So it's so important that we really consciously choose colors that make us feel good, colors that actually resonate with who we are as personalities, as well as just our inherited coloring because color is around us all the time yeah. and it does affect us. And what's interesting when I do colors for people is that instinctively people know what colors really suit them, but they don't have the confidence to follow it through mm. or somebody else has said, I don't like that color and it's influenced them. So mm. in a lot of cases, we actually grow up wearing certain colors and we, we morph into ones that are very different that don't belong to us because Emotional things have happened to us along the way. Um, and we've moved away from our true colors that people were often in. But I, I equally, I see people who haven't been very well, who end up having their colors done. And they actually say to me, I look better now than I ever have done than before mm. I was ill because I'm in the right colors, my best colors, the colors that make me look great. And so I feel great. And, and that's really wonderful for me to hear that. But consciously understanding the colors that really resonate with who you are your best colors that you've inherited through your skin tone and eyes and it can make a massive difference because it's about harmony. It's about yeah. that awakening of true self through the colors that you surround yourself in. And that goes for the colors in your home as well. It's, you know, it, it is uh, everywhere and it should be embraced as who you are in every sense, really, throughout one's whole lifestyle. Yeah, so, so, so what you're saying, the first point to be really aware is that when colors, you know, when you see color, when that light hits your eyeball, it's a part of that energy is affecting your mood all the time. Every, you know, every absolutely day. right. Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. And it, so the absence of color, the darkness is what makes us sad and depressed and unhappy mm. because we are missing. We're lacking what color is doing for our hormones. Yeah. So that's why it affects everybody on different levels, because we're all made differently. Mm. So we all need different things. And before, before we get into some detail, could you say something sort of very, maybe very general because like you said the darkness makes us feel sad i, I notice in the book that you, you advise taking like a cautious attitude to, to wearing black because um possibly you know because it is a color that people associate with you know it's sadness and can it can be a down color as well as being about being serious and professional could um could you say something about the kind of the general properties of each color you know sort of for maybe someone who hasn't really thought about this, what, what you so the general properties you associate yeah, no, with absolutely. each color. So let's look at, if you take the color wheel and the heat of color, so mm. uh, the way color affects us and our hypothalamus, which is our heat gland, mm. when you look at red, red is has the shortest wavelength. It is the hottest color. So red is the color of fire and passion, determination, and it gives us energy. What red does physically to us is it releases the hormone adrenaline. So red is that color. If you're feeling down and you're feeling tired and you don't have enough energy, red, wearing red, seeing red will give you the energy because it's releasing the adrenaline. So it's a fantastic color to wear if you're feeling low. It's a great color to wear leading up to Christmas because 
we all get quite worn down with all the activities and the parties, the stress of Christmas. Mm. Red is a really good colour to help give us the energy to get through that. It's also a wonderful colour to wear if you're going out to celebrate rather than, say, the usual black, little black dress or the black suit, putting into the outfit mm. because actually show that have energy the drive the passion and the fun for the festive spirit so red's a really important color it's also a big fashion color this season so it's about wearing the right shade of red when you've discovered that you actually really want to wear it because it gets you noticed you know red is that color that gets you noticed and next to red is orange and orange is also a hot color but it's combined with yellow orange is the color of sociability fun loving and communication it's very outgoing mm -hmm. orange as Frank Sinatra said it's the color of happiness so again, it's releasing those feel-good, happy hormones because it's on the hotter end of the scale. Mm. As you go around to yellow is the color of joy. We all know in spring when we see that first daffodil, how great do we feel that mm. bright yellow. Yellow is the color people have the biggest problem with. Yellow is the color of self-love and it's an amazing color to get into. It's also the color of mental creativity. Wonderful color to put in a study or a, um, um, an office environment because it will stimulate mentally terrible color to put in a bedroom because you just won't sleep mm. and I often have people telling me about oh my baby we didn't know if it was going to be a boy or girl we painted the nursery yellow and whoa does the baby sleep no well of course it doesn't so it's a great color to use with care because it is that mental stimulator so mm. uh, green is the balancer green is the color of nature we're around green all the time and don't realize how much it balances us if you go into hospitals and and treatment rooms green everyone's wearing green for a reason and that is because it is the natural balancer it's the harmonizer so it belongs to the heart chakra so it's a really important color to balance out some of the hot colors as well as we go around the color wheel we come into blue now blue is the opposite of red so therefore blue is the karma so it's no coincidence when we all go on holiday and we stare at blue skies and blue seas actually it's about the release of the hormone oxytocin and oxytocin is the natural karma. So wearing blue will naturally calm down your nervous system. So if you're very stressed about a situation, going into an interview, going to work, or just in everyday life, you've got relationship issues. Blue is the calming color, and it's also the color of communication, the throat chakra. So wonderful if you're needing those communication skills. Blue is the world, officially the world's favorite color. So it's a great color to wear in a work environment where you need the navy to be serious and show that discipline side. But also you combine it with turquoise, which is a color everybody can wear. There is a shade of turquoise for everybody. And it's, the, uh, it's a very special color, turquoise. It's a color of joy and individualism. So turquoise is, is one of those universal colors. It also keeps the suntan going. So on a physical level, when we come out of summer going into winter, helps with that too. And then we go into the purples. And purple is, is a very spiritually high color. It's the color of creativity and inspiration. So purple going in, into the winter season becomes very popular fashionably. So a lot of people love purple. And it's a great, per you'll see it in a lot of creative industries, design, art, artists love the color purple. And then we go into pink. Pink's a really interesting color because so many guys are getting into pink now. And that's just so fabulous mm. to see that actually pink has not become a, a gender issue color. Everybody can wear pink. But again, there's a shade of pink for everybody. Um, and I love talking about pink because actually the really, really hot pink that uh, is should be considered in work far, far more than say a very pale pink particularly for women which can be seen as quite a vulnerable color mm. bright pink hot pink is that color of fun and individuality it's feminine but it's also very dynamic and we all saw hillary clinton doing her her pink bright pink shocking trouser suit when she was up for election she didn't get it but her message was very strong it was i'm a really powerful woman in a man's world i'm feminine but i'm going to get the job done mm. so Pink has connotations that don't just mean feminine, sweet and twee. They can be very powerful with that strong pink. So then when we come into the more neutral colors, black. Yeah, black is a color that actually people think is slimming and chic and smart and elegant. And you know, it's all those things. Mm -hmm. However, if you wear too much black and it doesn't belong to you in the sense that you don't resonate energetically with black, 
too, wearing too much black can really drain you and make you very tired. Mm. Aside from the fact if you put black up against the skin and it's not part of your cool skin tone, actually what it will do is it will age the face dramatically. And on young people, it will make them look very tired. So that dark panda thing under the eyes, black will always look for dark things in the face. So on a, a warm skin tone, it will age it and it will also make it look very tired. So black suits certain people. I have people who say, I love black jewels. I'm always gonna wear it and that's great. But it's about how do you wear it without damaging your looks and draining your energy too much. So of course you can wear black. It's not about never wearing black. It's about mm. actually how to wear it and how to wear it so it doesn't do those negative things to you. Because color's all about the positive things. And so wearing the wrong colors is equally as important as wearing the right ones mm. for yourself, for each individual, yeah. Uh, that's brilliant. And what, what, what I find inspiring about what you're saying, because my mind's going thinking lots of things as you're saying it, is that maybe you know I've personally you know I've got an idea of a certain colours that suit me, but actually yep. on many other areas of my life I'm quite unconscious about colours and actually by yep. by really um, learning what you're saying and also what you teach in the book, um, it, uh, you could by being far more conscious I mean all the time of colours it's it's about empowerment isn't it it's empowering yourself in your in your life and uh, you know smoothing the ride and help, helping you express yourself how you want to express yourself is that, you say exactly that's that, that a great way of summing it up and mm. each of us have a have a, a personality uh, that that actually it's really important that we express and that doesn't mean you have to be an introvert or an extrovert you know and I think sometimes we're all pushed to be extroverts and therefore we should all be wearing hot bright colors and mm. getting ourselves seen but actually you know People who are introverted, who don't want to walk into a room and everybody go, oh, goodness, look at you in your bright orange. Mm. Some people really don't want that. And that's mm. really OK. This is not about trying to make somebody different to who they are. It's about bringing out the best of who that person is. Empowering is a really good, good word. Transformation is a great word. Mm. And, it, and it's about finding out who you are and actually really bringing that out to the foreground. So if you are a real introvert and you're really happy, being who you are in the sense that those colors that you wear actually really resonate with who you are. So somebody will compliment you by looking nice and actually having that confidence to go into a room and feel good about yourself. It's not about shouting. For some people, shouting's great, but for some people it isn't. Yeah. So I guess color is really about finding uh, yourself and being the best that you can be. Um, I, I went into a situation where I was uh, doing a presentation for a group of uh, corporate people. Mm -hmm. And I had a very introverted person, a, a guy there, who wore very washed out colors, really didn't think color was important in a work environment at all. Uh, and actually his boss had said, yeah, it really is, Jules. You know, can you help with this? But I knew who he was immediately because mm -hmm. he really thought that color wasn't that important. He was kind of there for the ride, but wasn't mm -hmm. really listening. And when I got him up in front of everyone, and it was he was in drab grays and he looked very washed out, but he had quite pale colouring and it needed some colour. Mm. Not that I wanted to make it so bright that he, he stood back from the room and went, no, I can't, I can't even look at myself. Mm. But I put a really great shade of, uh, of blue on him that was kind of like a periwinkle and I mixed it with, a, with a, a really lovely raspberry pink. And literally, he looked at himself in the mirror, everybody went, oh my goodness, look at you. And he sat, he put his shoulders back and he looked at himself and he said, gosh, that's really quite nice, isn't it? So I then did a different colorway with him. And what was really interesting about this guy, having thought that it didn't matter, that it wasn't important, apparently he went home and he said to his wife, I need to look at my wardrobe and change all the colors. Mm -hmm. They went shopping, he walks into work on the Monday morning in a bright blue suit with a purple tie and literally marched in. And it was like one of those moments apparently in a film when everybody did their jaws dropped and they all went, oh my God, look at him. <laughs> And he felt so good about himself. Yeah. And, it, and, and, and that to me is like a complete tick in the box because what it's doing is actually showing someone they don't have to put their heads down. They don't have to wear drab colors so they just don't get noticed. Mm. But it's about being noticed how you want to be seen. So it's a projection of your, yourself and your personality and how that works for you. So actually it was just a good example of yeah. someone who really thought color didn't matter. But actually when he did, he got so excited by it 
because he realised that he could feel more confident about himself within that. Yeah, that's that's a brilliant anecdote. And um, what I you know what I noticed in the book, obviously the the, the book is very compre- you know, comprehensive, and because we've been covering lots of different ways you can use color, color, from literally just finding out what suits you as a person to implementing color in all sorts of individual specific situations. But what struck me about that example, and often in in the examples you give in the in the book, is that it's some it it it's something that really helps kind of instantly really and because if you want to say you want to yeah. oh, i want to make my body change my body and change my posture and lose weight and gain muscle mm. or or something the um that's you know that's thinks oh that's going to take a long time or yes. it's never going to yeah. happen um and there, there are lots of examples in the book where especially if people you give examples of people who've had serious illnesses or people who've aged or people whose bodies are not as you know as yep. perky and shining as they were Absolutely. when they were 18 you yep. can like you said there's that almost instant transformation it is incredible when yeah. i uh, and i had a woman who came to see me uh, and you talk about aging which is so mm. you know such a big issue in our society particularly with everyone doing all the cosmetic procedures and things which are mm. you know i always find upsetting because to me color can do an instant facelift i mean it really is that instant i had a woman mm. come to see me in her late 60s she was such a lovely lady, but she was quite tall and quite broad and didn't feel particularly feminine. She was very well put together in the colours that she was wearing, but they weren't, I could see they weren't right for her, but I needed to understand why she felt she needed to come and see me. And she said, Jules, I've worked very hard at my wardrobe and the way that I present myself. Um, but she said, I've never been complimented. Now she was in her late sixties. And can you imagine someone saying, I've never yeah. been complimented? And I felt very upset about it. And we spent a couple of hours together. And what was really interesting was that when I put the color drapes on her that were part of her true personality, her true season, so actually made her skin look so completely different, she smiled every time I put the right drape on. Okay. And what was really at the end of it, I said to her, do you realize that you smiled every time I put one of those she was actually a spring, so she was a bright season. She was wearing all the autumn muted colours. And she said, no, Jules, I had absolutely no idea. So subconsciously, her body was smiling with the energy of what was happening. Mm. And it was making such a difference to her physically that emotionally she was getting it at a level that she wasn't recognising. Yeah. And uh, so beyond that, I did actually take her. It, we, I took her shopping and I got her into all the bright colours and I toned it down with some of her neutrals so it wasn't too overpowering for her because actually when you start getting into your right colors it's not all about suddenly you know blasting your wardrobe with nothing but red it's it's about mixing it in very slowly so that you actually get used to what's happening to the change because it can be so dramatic and so trans uh, transformative so she we did this and uh, a week later she rang me and she said Jules I just have to tell you I went out on Friday night I went to see a friend she opened the door she stood back and went wow you look amazing (laughs) and she said I got complimented and that's what color did and if I'd never worked again I'd have been happy because you know what that one person feeling Mm. like that in her late 60s she felt feminine and attractive and color did that for her and that is how immediate it is so actually it's not about because yeah of course you can change as much as you feel is possible but actually one can only change one's body shape a certain amount because it's what you're born with but color getting it right wearing your best colors feeling that way about yourself actually is instant and it doesn't have to be expensive either you know you don't have to go and buy a load of designer kit just buying a bright or a or a muted or a um, a pale or a winter scarf it doesn't matter it's about those colors that you put up against the face yeah. that make an instant difference that can really do a, a facelift instantly because you're getting the harmonizing colors with your underlying skin tone and that's what makes the difference so it does only have to be a scarf it doesn't have to be expensive that's the real joy of color really yeah amazing from i've never been complimented which is you know amazing as you said um you know can you imagine and and to wow you know walking through the door in an instant yeah. wow yeah. So you mentioned color seasons there so for i think that's a good place to start for the for the beginner so if, if someone's listening to this yes. and that maybe they just thought oh i've i've never thought about it i've, I've worn the same clothes for years and i never thought about yeah. it um 
for the for, if you just want to get to grips with what suits you, um, you mentioned the draping and the colour seasons, and obviously you go into detail yes. in the book about it. Could you say something now about colour seasons and uh, beginners? Sure, right yeah. Colour seasons, yeah. It is quite, yeah, it's, it, it, people often say to me, Jules, how am I going to know what my season is? Mm. Um, and obviously there are certain colours that when you put up, they're going to resonate more. And the reason for that is because seasons tend to, fall, they fall into four categories. And mm. uh, the best way to relate to them is when you take the seasons in this country. So we have two warm seasons and we have the warm season of spring, which mm. is a very bright warm season. Okay, so if you think about yellow, we talked about the yellow daffodils bright red tulips mm. and um, let's also think about the shoots on the trees the bright green shoots on the trees so we have the amazing bright colors of um, spring and the personality of the spring is bright fun loving great communicator sociable people so you think about the, that personality type wearing those bright colors it's going to mm. really harmonize the actual colouring of the spring tends to be what we call the peaches and cream complexion. Mm -hmm. So it tends, they can be pale or they can be very dark, but the complexion has a yellow golden base. Mm -hmm. A lot of springs blush and flush. So one of the key things about the spring is a high cheek colour. And the reason for that is because the spring is full of energy, they run very fast. So they tend to have this ability to have a high cheek colour because they're very excitable. Uh, they can have a drink and blush, they can get embarrassed and blush, but they have this ability to blush. And that is one of the key things to knowing that you have the spring colouring. Mm. Then we go into the other warm season, and it, which is warmer still, which is autumn. And we see in autumn, the leaves all changing colours. They're going very muted. We get the olives, the rich burnt oranges, the chocolate browns. Mm. And the autumn personality is what's known as the choleric. It's the A-type, very driven so the workaholic, the person that has so much energy, they find it very hard to step back. People who love being in charge of things, that run around uh, always organizing, running their own businesses, heads of things, are very good delegators, great fun people, can be slightly bombastic sometimes because they are, you know, uh, very natural leaders, autumns. Um, and so their coloring needs to be really strong strong and warm so if you think of them in their oranges and reds combined with the chocolates and the and the olives very strong warm colors that really bring out the essence of the autumn personality and then we go into the two cool seasons of summer and winter when we think about summer you think about the landscape being slightly faded because the sun's been on it since spring so the Summer colours go from very bright spring into what I would call a dusting of talcum powder. So everything goes faded. OK, the summer personality is very introverted. Summers don't want to walk into a room and everybody notice them. They want to walk in and blend because they, their introversion allows them to say it's OK that actually I don't have that high energy and I don't need that. So summer colours tend to be more pale and pastel on the blues, pinks and purples. Summers are wonderful diplomats. They make amazing friends. They're very creative people, but they don't need to be out there and doing all the socialising that the warm seasons need to do. So their colours very much harmonise with who they are. And then we go into the winter season, the only season that can wear black really well. OK, winter is very, very cool and very dynamic and strong and very introverted. So winters as personalities are real perfectionists. They are really creative people and they are able to be on their own for long periods of time, which would drive the springs and the autumns to distraction because they need to be busy and with people. So their colouring tends to be very strong and cool. Mm -hmm. So anything with black in it, like very, very dark green, very, very dark grey and very, very dark blue. Mm -hmm. Those people, if we think about someone like, for instance, Nigella Lawson with her very, very porcelain skin and jet black hair. Mm. Winters don't tend to tan. They don't have that high cheek color. But those very dynamic, dramatic colors really suit the winter personality. Yeah. So the color draping will obviously you need to take colors you've got in your wardrobes to see how it works. Black is always the definitive. Mm. Always try black first. Put it up against the face. If it doesn't show any signs of aging and it doesn't show any signs of tiredness and you have that very cool coloring and you recognize your personality type, you're probably a winter. Mm -hmm. However, if you put black up and you go, oh, my goodness, 150, here we come. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's about taking it away from the face, 
having your own skin tone reflecting up against the skin or putting a color there to break up the black effect. But that will tell you immediately whether you fall into the winter category. Then you can move into the other categories. Take the colors that you've got or go into shops and play with the colors and have a look at what they do to the skin. Do they make the skin look vibrant, youthful, even skin tone? Or do they make your skin look tired and dull? And once you start looking, it's so immediate, it's incredible. Yeah. The people I train, they go, Jules, we're never gonna get this. Literally within the first row of colors, they're going, oh my God, that's so dull. <laughs> wow, look at the brightness of that. Yeah. And actually, it really is immediate. It's, it's something that you, when you start looking and putting colors up against your skin, actually you realize, how you've been wearing things that don't work and how suddenly you go, wow, that really makes a difference. I, I look healthy today. And actually the real key is if someone says to you, well, you look really well today. It doesn't have to be, you look beautiful, you look stunning, you look handsome, it's you look well today. You've probably got one of the colors on that are your best colors that harmonize with your skin tone and your personality. So it is about that wellness, that health, that well-being, that great colors do for you and the negative colors need to either be got rid of or you need to work with them yeah. actually put them in the wardrobe but put a color up against the skin that does really resonate and harmonize with one's own personal coloring and that's the way to do it so you don't have to go and throw the whole wardrobe out but it is a conscious choice yeah, yeah. does this color really make me look the best i can be and therefore how am i projecting myself to others how are people seeing me what do i need to do today once you've got that right, am I going for a job interview? Am I communicating with lots of people? Therefore, should I be looking at blue? What shade of blue then really works for me? So mm. it's a conscious lifestyle decision to use colour to make the best of your wardrobe and who you are. Yeah, so brilliant. So what you're saying is not like some kind of esoteric knowledge or like wine tasting. You have to have some very refined artistic sense. Once you start, you know, look, studying this and applying these principles, it's it's pretty clear when you hold those colors up it is and i think people panic and think oh i uh, you know uh, it's got to be a learned trade and obviously if you want to go go and teach people how to do it of course it is but yeah. we can all understand when we look at someone we go wow that gosh you look amazing today yeah. what have you done yeah. you know yeah, yeah. it can be that simple you just color on and for women also it's about makeup it's it's also about getting that right with the right color because what you put on your face and how you project the colors that you wear is very important as well. And I think, you know, it's very tricky because we all get such conflicting advice, particularly mm. in the world of fashion and the world that we live in in the media. We get told every season that there's a different shape and a different color we should be in. Mm. And I say to people, find your best colors first, yeah. then work with fashion. Yeah, because yeah, it yeah. should be about you. And if this color this season is red, as it is, it happens to be one of my favorite colors and I'm wearing one of the best colors for, for me today, it's mm. about saying, I actually really love red, so how am I gonna put that into my wardrobe this season? How am I gonna wear it to make me feel energetic and empowered for what I need to do this season? Yeah. And that's how color should be incorporated mindfully into one's life. Yeah, uh, brilliant. And also be aware, you mentioned a couple of examples in the book, we can have some bag psychological baggage with some colors. You said, so one, I think Yeah, that's one... really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I've had people who, you know, got bullied at school and they wore a green uniform yeah. and, and they don't ever want to wear green. Yeah. You know, we are so um, influenced by our upbringing. And one that the, the actual lovely lady, one of the ladies on the, the back of the book, picture of Millie, mm -hmm. um, she's actually a St. Lucian lady. And why I found her so inspiring was her story of how poor her family were growing up. Mm -hmm. And she absolutely wanted desperately to wear pink. Mm -hmm. But her mother couldn't afford to give her any clothes. So it was all handed down from other family members she never got pink mm. so when she grew up and she got married every single thing at her wedding was pink i mean she went she od'd in mm. on pink yeah. everything or bridesmaids the flowers everything was mm. pink and i said to her i said how does pink make you feel and she said pink makes me feel really happy and attractive mm. and she said i'm fulfilling something in myself that was deprived when I was growing up, and I feel fan fabulous in it. Mm. And, and to me, that was so interesting, and that's why I put her in the book, and I put a picture of her on the book, mm. because she's so beautiful in it. She absolutely radiates with happiness, because it was such a deprivation. So actually, that's the opposite to 
certain people who go through emotional trauma and can't ever wear a colour again because of the associations with it. And actually, you know, maybe it was a shade of that colour that they could could never wear again. So yeah. my, job, my job is to actually help people say that, well, OK, that bottle green it affected you very badly when you were at school. But how about we look at one of your colours? How about lime? Because it's got some yellow in it. How do you feel about wearing a different shade of green? Mm -hmm. And actually helping people in that healing process to understand that there are so many different shades of a colour that psychologically one has an issue with. Mm -hmm. You could get out of that. So you're not depriving yourself of a colour that is of harmony and balance, taking the green as an example, that could be such an important part of that person's life and and often people morph into very dark colors and black because they put on weight or because they've had a loss in their life we all need to be in a color maybe for a certain amount of time yeah. to process i would never get someone out of a color if they needed it for their healing process yeah. what happens though is we get stuck in it and then we find change really difficult because yeah. we stay in it too long if that makes sense so the healing process about using color to come out even in little bits is bringing that person out of the trauma and out of the emotional despair into a world of color where they can feel more in balance. And that doesn't necessarily mean getting rid of all those colors, just maybe changing the way that yeah. you see them and the, the percentage that you're using that color. Yeah, and so what you're saying is like, our, we're constantly evolving in our relationship to color and what, what you're kind of teaching in, um, in a way sort of suggest, you know, recommending us do is, is always be conscious of our relationship to color. What am I doing today? What am I feeling today? How, how do I want to relate to the world? And how can I use color to help me do that? You know, whether I'm going to work or going to a party or even just staying in, you know. Absolutely. It is about a mood, isn't it? We all every day wake up having different challenges in our world. Every day it's a changing place. I think mm. once you've established the colors, your best colors, mm. and that is for life. You know, you have a color palette for life. You're born with it. We move away from it, but actually it's really important to come back to it if we've lost it or find it for the first time, which a lot of people do. Mm. You have your colour palette, you're either bright, you're either more muted, you're more introverted, you're more extrovert. So you, you have your palette, you have your inherited uh, skin tone, eye colour, hair colour that you're born with. That is something we inherit from our parents or our grandparents. So mm. that's what we've got for our lifetime. So it's about working with your palette. But every day, as you rightly say, it's about then consciously, mindfully choosing colours that can help us make the best of the day ahead. So every day will be a different challenge, potentially. Or you may go into a certain colour for a certain period of your life because you need blue for communication because of a relationship issue that you're going through. Or you need red because you're, you're exhausted and you're coming out of an illness and you need to get into the job market again. You need to get a promotion. You need to be seen mm. to have the passion and drive and give yourself that adrenaline to get yeah. yourself out there. Uh, red will stimulate your energy, won't it? it will... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And if, you're, if you've come out of a broken relationship and you're looking to go dating again, orange is the colour of sociability. It'll help you make more friends, mm. show people that you have got that confidence and ability to go out there. Even if you don't necessarily feel it, wearing that color will help you project to people that you have that ability to mm. communicate and have fun. So mm. color can be used every day, but it's very important. It's mm. a very great point to make. Brilliant, and the book, The Essential Guide to Mindful Dressing is, is out now. Um, and it's kind of like, if you're interested in this, it's like, a, kind of, it's like um, a toolbox for all these different aspects of your life of discovering your you know your base colors which are always going to suit you and then giving you giving you all the different um skills and tips and tricks for all the different life issues life situations you might find yourself in so yeah it's for everybody it's for any age for yeah. um, you know i see kids in their teenage years struggling with confidence issues yeah. um wanting to follow their dreams how to go out there for interviews right the way through to people you know, in old age, who still, you know, why shouldn't they still choose colour and look great? It's yeah. for uh, all uh, ages and uh, emotional issues in yeah. between that we all go through. So uh, I hope people find those tips and tools do help with colour. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. No, I'm, I'm inspired. I feel like going into town now and <laughs> doing some clothes shopping. And, <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, sp sprucing up everything. Uh, Jules, so where can where can we find you at the moment? What are you up to at the moment? And where can people find you if they want to get in touch or know more? 
I'm always available. My website uh, at Color Consultancy. Mm. Um, people can uh, log in to see all the media stuff that I've done. Um, I'm actually working now with the schools. As I said, it's a real passion mm. of mine going in and helping these kids and teaching students. I'm also doing a lot of presentations. I'm going into corporate companies now and actually mm. helping the corporate world understand how to wear color. It's it's a really yeah. big changing world. People are going from the mm. the black, the dark colors now to far more expression of who they are. And mm. that's a really exciting world to be going into, particularly where guys are concerned who've never really had the help that they need. And I, I find that again with boys mm. in schools, so they don't get the help the girls get. Mm. So guys are really interested now, uh, you know, in understanding what colors they can wear at work and in their leisure time. So that's a really important part um, of what I'm doing. And uh, just continuing to fly the color flag however I can. It's really important to me. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on today. And um, yeah, thanks, Ben.